Hello everyone, and we're here to discuss Visual Studio Code Java extension for debugging. And we've got so many nice toys and tricks to show you. I'm Rory, I'm a cloud advocate for Microsoft. And with me as part of the Microsoft Java uh, team, we've got Jinbo. Jinbo, introduce yourself. Hi, Rory. Thank you for having me here. My name is Jinbo. I joined Microsoft VS Code Java tuning team about four and a half years ago. Now I'm working on Java language server and a Java debug extension. That's my background. Thank you so much. And we've got uh, a, a lot to show you. I know it's easy for you to install a Java and Visual Studio Code, but show the listeners on how they can get started uh, to uh, install the extension. I will recommend you to install the extension pack for Java. This extension will install all necessary Java extension for Java development on VS Code. It's called language for Java, debug for Java, test runner for Java, maybe for Java, and so on. The Java debug capability is provided by debug for Java extension. And do I see that right? Is there 10? million downloads for the Java extension. That's a lot of downloads. Now, each one of those people are using it every day to actually run their Java code. Can you show me how they use their VS Code to de debug their Java applications? Sure. Uh, as a developer, debugging is a must-have skill for bug fix. Today, I'm going to use the Pet Clinic Summer Project to demo the Java debug experience on VS Code. We have several entries to help you to launch a debug session. The first way is to using the hotlines. If your Java class has a main method that is defined, you will see this run and the debug hotlines displayed on top of main method. Also, you can use in the wrong Java and the debug Java context menu from the edit title bar. Lastly, you can just click F5. This shortcut will trick a debugging for your application directly. Now I'm clicking debug hotlines. The debug extension will calculate the class path and uh, launch your program on the terminal. From the terminal, you can also view your program output from there. Now my application is started on port 8080. So I'm going to demo the debug feature by using this application. I will have to access this app first. This app is a pet clinic management system. Now I have a customer. His name is George Franklin. He has a cat. Leo is logged to the system. Now he has a new pet. His name is Max. He want to add to the system. Tap install. Now it's report some errors saying this name is actually in use. But if you go back to the first page, you can see this owner doesn't have the pet name with Max. So it looks like something wrong on my application. So I'm going to use the source code to, to debug this bug. First, let me go to the pet controller class file. And uh, the error message is comes from this hotline. So I will add a breakpoint here. Go back to my program. Sorry. Now the breakpoint is hit, and uh, there is a debug view. Is bring to your focus. From the variable view, all variables visible from the current context is listed here. 
you can expand the variables. Also, there's a whole stack view. You can see the current path thread. You can click the deep on different stack frame to get its states. Also, from the window, you can see there's a floating to bar here. There's a continue button, step over button, step into, step out, restart, stop, cut out, replace. So let's continue to find my bug. Uh, I'm going to step into the check exist function. The step over. You can see there is a, a yellow area. It, it will show the variables in the current hotline as, as a side of your code. So this function has three condition check. Instead of step into each condition check, actually I can leverage the evaluation feature to, to evaluate the, the, the program state in advance. For example, I can copy the first condition check here. So this pattern max is not empty, it's true. Copy the second condition check here. It's true as well, it's a new third condition check. To, looks like something wrong at the third condition check. So I will go my program to the third condition check and I step into the function get pad. This function is to find the path name with max. Step over, step over, step over. So this function shows it starts to find any path name with max. I just step out my function. Oh, since this function is to check this, looks like we use a wrong equal check here. So it looks like I found the root host. Next, next step is to try to change the engine check to not equal and save. So my next step is to verify my, my bug fix. We have a feature that is called code replace. That is very convenient for bug fix. So if if you if I click this button, it will apply my how to change on the fly. You can see the cool. yeah the top cool. the top stack frame is just restarted on the fly. So I can continue run my application. You can see the check exist has passed, so I can just uh, continue my application and I go back to the web page. You can see the path is added successfully. So now I, I have leveraged the debugging to find a bug and have a bug fix. To recap a little bit about my demo, I showed how to add a breakpoint how to leverage the step debugging, variable view, and the debug console to observe your program state. Meanwhile, I showed how to use the hot code replace to verify your bug fix on the fly. That that is so cool. I still can't get used to that hot hot cold uh, replace. Uh, what other tricks can we use to customize the debug configuration? Actually, we have multiple places to let you to customize the debug settings. The first place is the launch duration. So, I just type a quote. So, you can see there's so many keys here. For example, I can change my console from integrated terminal to internal console. And also, I can add environment variables to my application. The second place is the user setting. If you search java.debug, you can see the, there is a 21 debug settings provided by debug extension. From the settings, you can customize something like the 
variable parameters. For example, you can limit the numeric precession. Also, show numbers in hex format in variable unit. So, regarding the variable format, actually, we have a UI to let you to configure it more conveniently. Let me check a debug, a breakpoint again. So if you go to the variable view, the right click here, you can see we have multiple variable formats here. I can switch between hex, the decimal, and also I can disable the two string object view and the label two string object view. Yeah, that's 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 the place you where you can customize your debug session. Thanks, Jimbo. And yeah, there's so, there's so much that we covered today. Uh, where can people actually go in and do some tutorials and uh, and and get started with what you showed them? Exactly. We have a special documentation to introduce these debugging features I have demoed today. So if you go to the running and the debugging Java tutorial, you can find and all features. On code.visualstudio.com, uh, that, yes. that tutorial there. Yeah, that, that's a great, I, I, I live on that uh, site and it's a great place to do. And there's, there's how to get uh, started, how to do install, how to navigate and uh, edit refactoring. And of course, the, uh, the run and debug. Thank you so much, Jimbo, for today, for showing us how to get started with running and debugging with that great extension. And we look forward to seeing those 10 million developers uh, reach out to Microsoft at Java and tell us about their great experiences. Thanks, everyone, and goodbye. Goodbye.